priest, your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right hand or whenever you turn to the left, you will also defile the covering of your images of silver and the ornament of your molded images of gold. You will throw them down as unclean things. You will say to them, get away. Tonight I want to speak to someone. I believe God is speaking to, he's already been dealing with your heart already throughout the night, throughout the week, throughout the month. I want to talk to you about following God's GPS system. Following God's GPS system. Let's pray. Father, we thank you right now, God, for this time you've given us. Father, I just pray right now, God, that you will speak, God, that you will speak, Lord, to a heart, God, that has went in the wrong direction. That you, Lord Jesus, would get someone back on track, God, to know who you are, God. You are the same, God, yesterday, today, and forevermore. Father, I pray right now, God, that the spirit of confusion, Lord, will be destroyed in the name of Jesus. I pray right now that whatever tries to rise above the knowledge of Christ, that it be destroyed and that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, we loose you, God, into this sanctuary, God, and we pray, God, that you will burn inside of us, God, the fruits of true repentance. We love you, God. We honor you and we praise your name. In Jesus' name, let everyone say amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Daniel Boone, the American frontier, frontierman, he said it in a kind of comical way, I've never been lost, but I have been bewildered one, once for three days and nights. If you don't know where you're going, then you find it easier to get lost or sidetracked in this life. One of the best inventions known to a traveling man or woman is the GPS. How many people have GPS either in your car mount it up or eat it on your phone. The best GPS system that I found is this app called Waze. Have you ever looked, used the app Waze? Anybody ever used the app Waze? Waze is an app that would literally tell you if it's a piece of cardboard on the side of the road. It also will tell you if there's cops spotted up ahead. That's why I like it so much because as a good Christian man, I like to go 95 to 100 miles per hour at a time, amen? It tells me there's a cop up a road as it tells me that there's even a, a car on the side of the road to just see it, needed to be aware of that. I like to use Waze because it's a, a app that lets me get a pass to detours. It'll let me, you know, at times if there's traffic going on in Memphis and it's jammed. At one time we was coming back from, um, um, I think it was Little Rock. We was coming back from Little Rock and we was about to take the exit to I-40. Everybody know that this is the best way to do it. But for some reason, the GPS system was telling me to go around the way like Jonesboro. That is like a long way. You're going all around hills and everything. But at that moment, I had a choice whether to listen to this voice or to follow my own voice. My own voice was telling me I need to go the way I know I should go. But the GPS was telling me I need to go the way of Jonesboro. At the last moment, I finally listened to the voice that was on the inside. How many tonight are glad that you have listened to the voice of the Holy Spirit that was on the inside of you? Had I not listened to that small voice of the GPS, a woman's voice, is there I running that sometimes uh, the best voice it is is to have a woman. I have a GPS system that is not a program system. She sits right next to me, and she stops on the brake in an imaginal way. If I'm going too fast, I see her over there doing this. Carly, go this way, go that way. I have the best GPS system in the world. It's called Jamie Barfield. Can I get a gay man? But had I not listened to that GPS system, all of a sudden, when I kept straight, as it was telling me to do, I seen traffic stop like never before. There was uh, cars and trucks lined up all the way to the exit. Instantly, the GPS system was trying to get me to go in the right direction, and I was being hard-headed and listening to my own voice, but thank God I listened at the last moment and avoided hours of delay. I read later on that those people was in that line for 10 hours straight. I was trying to get home so I can get some sleep, so I can go to church the next morning. I would have been in that line for 10 hours straight had I not followed the GPS system. 
give God glory tonight. Sometimes you have to listen to God's positioning system, his voice. His voice is always speaking. God is a God who always speaks. But the problem is we don't listen at times. We don't listen to God's voice, and he has things in store for us. We miss out sometimes on God's best because we are not listening to his voice. There was four lepers sitting outside of the gate, wasting away, ears falling off, body parts falling off, and one got the bright idea to listen to an inner voice. How about we get up and do something about it? How about we, why sit here till we die? My question to you tonight is this, and it's off the record. Why sit in your pews till you die when there's a generation of people that are headed to hell? How about we get up and we do something about it? How about we be the gospel at house church and we go out into the highways and byways and compel people to come in? If the Jehovah Witness can go door to door every Saturday with no power, how about a powerful church go out and we begin to knock on doors and tell them people of the goodness of Jesus Christ and I believe that because he lives on, on the inside of us that we will see a change like never before that we will see a generation of people that may be headed down the wrong way that can make a U-turn because in God's kingdom U-turns are permitted if there's somebody tonight you was headed down the wrong road you was going down the wrong way but you heard the voice of God says get out from among them come out from amongst them be ye separate and I will receive you and you got on the right track the Bible said that he took you out of the Mari clay, set your feet on the solid ground, and he will establish your going. I'm thankful tonight that God seen enough inside of all of us to get us off our track, to rock our own way of going things, and put us on the right way because he's good and he's worthy to be praised. Somebody shout hallelujah. He's put inside of each and every one of us a positioning system. He's placed inside of us what is called, even if you don't know Christ, it's amazing to me that he gave you a conscience. Your conscience is a replica of the Holy Spirit. Even before you knew Christ, you had your conscience telling you, don't do this, don't do that, go on this way, go on that direction. He's put inside of you a God positioning system to get you back on the right track. Today, smartphones comes with a GPS. Technology has not only made GPS more affordable, they're also more sophisticated. The change has been amazing. There used to be a time where you can go inside of a gas station. How many people remember that time where you can go inside of gas stations, you can get maps? And the only challenge then would be to learn how to read the maps. I'm talking about the maps had looked like a, like a maze. They have signs going here, signs going everywhere. The GPS has been one of the greatest things created to man. Now we go inside of airports and we hear, we see billboards that says, get directions from satellites, not just from gas stations. As I was thinking about those words, I realized that God has put inside of us all a GPS. Our first GPS system is a Holy Spirit that God has given us. Your Holy Spirit will teach you. The Bible says he will lead and guide you. He's not an it. He's a person. He will lead and guide you into all truth. He's not just talking about things that pertain to the kingdom, but he's talking about all true. Let's get it down to this level. He would teach a young man how to stay away from a young lady before it's the time. Amen. He would teach somebody who's about to make the worst business mistake in their life. He would teach you how to do that. He would teach someone like Tay Tay who loves football and you think, well, God is not concerned about football. He would teach you how to run the best you ever ran. He would teach you how to stretch the best you've been ever stretched. He would teach you even the simple things because if you're invested in it, he's invested in it. God would teach you. First, your GPS. There's seven, there's seven features about God's given GPS. The first one is God's positioning system. Genesis 3, 9 says in the New International Version, he asks a powerful question that we all should ponder tonight. One demands an answer for all of us tonight. The verse says this, but the Lord God, God called to man and he asks, where are you? I'm sure this comes to no surprise to you, but God knows everything. God knows your ins, he knows your out. And when he asked Adam this question, it wasn't because God didn't, didn't know where he was. God wanted Adam to consider this, where am I? There are some young people here tonight and you're lost, you're confused, you're all messed up about who you are. I'm asking you this question that God asked Adam, where are you? Where are you in life? 
Are you where you need to be? If you were to close your eyes tonight, would you? The Bible says to be absent out of the body is to be present with the Lord. When you close your eyes tonight and if you were to pass from this life to the next, would you be in the presence of the Lord or would you hear these words, depart from me for I never knew you. If you do not know Jesus Christ in the part of your sin, this is a great night to be saved. This is a great night to give it all over to him. This is a great night to have a, a friend that sits closer than a brother. This is a great night to embark on a journey where you partner with the king of the universe and you become a king of kings and a lord of lords servant. This is a great night to be saved for today is the day of salvation. Don't wait for tomorrow because tomorrow may not be promised but tonight is the night where God is able to save those who call on him. He said whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Tonight is the night of salvation. It's a great night to be saved. And I'm not just talking about he saved me just so I can, I can be saved from hell. Aren't you glad that the greatest part of heaven is not the blissness of the, uh, of the gold that's on the streets or the crystal seas or, the, or the, the ruby that's all on the doorknobs? The greatest part of heaven is this that I get a chance to encounter my Lord Jesus Christ. That is why I am saved tonight, not because he saved me from hell, but because he saved me to have a relationship with me, a, a eternal relationship with the King of Kings. Tonight is a great night if you don't know him. So he's given us God's position and system. But the Lord called and said, where are you? Adam was lost far beyond his own capability of understanding. We at one point were lost didn't know how to find our way, but God asks us the question, where are we? The best thing you could ever do in your life is locate where you are. Where are you right now in your life? Are, where you, are, are you in the place where God has called you to be? Are you being fruitful? Jesus said if you're not being fruitful, eventually you will be cast down. You will be cut off. If you're not connected to the vine, if you are a branch that has swayed aside, eventually dead branches fall to the ground, and then eventually they are gathered up and cast into the fire. But thankful to tonight that Jesus Christ went to the fire so we won't have to go to the fire. Second, your GPS is God's protection system. Have you ever seen in some of the movies on television where a criminal will come in to offer protection to a store clerk owner or to a, a grocery store said, I will offer you protection if you give me certain amount of things. Eventually, the one who's offering protection is the one who's actually threatened the, the grocery store. Psalms 511 says this in the New Tra Living Translation, but let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them that those who love your, your name may rejoice. They may rejoice in you. Not only does God offer protection, but he also offers protection over your enemies because your enemies become his enemies. Exodus 23, verse 22 in the Amplified says, But if you would indeed listen to and obey his voice, I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. God's protection system is better, more thorough, and less expensive than those who offer by ADT, NET, or even Brink's home system. God will protect you. And therefore, if you have an enemy, God, he says this in his word, that your enemies will become his enemies. Can I tell you tonight, though, that people are not our enemies? People are not your enemies, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual hosts of weakness in heavenly places. So what God is saying, if, if Satan is coming against your family, he's coming against the family of God. If Satan is coming against your kids, he's coming against God's kids because your enemies is God's enemy. And this is what he said, when you place the blood of Jesus Christ on the doorpost of your house, on the doorpost of your home, he said, literally, I will stand in front of your house and I will fight. I remember a few years ago, my son Lamont got in some of the worst trouble that we could ever think about. He had a guy that was basically saying he owed him $80,000. $80,000 that we would have to come up with as a family. Uh, first, my flex was to, we're going to take care of this the way I used to take care of things. We're going to handle things the way we used to. But then I realized there's a greater God that's bigger than any dope dealer, 
that's bigger than any gang member. And, we, and he has given Lamont a mama that has a big, 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 big way of handling things. Jamie takes him a long text saying, let my boy go. He belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's covered by the blood. There's nothing that you can do to him. And guess what was the result of that? He let our son go because our God is in the business of saving. Our God is in the business of delivering. And you don't mess with a mama that is mad and full of the Holy Ghost. Can I get a good amen tonight? I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to say anything. All she did was send a text talking about how, my, how good our God is and our God would take care of our God would protect. We didn't have to go buy guns. We didn't have to ask people for protection. Our God was our protection. If our God is able to do something like that, how much more do you think he's able to do in your life? He's able to protect your home. You don't have to have guns. Even though guns are good, I'm telling you tonight, I have a 230, an axe and a 238. And it's found in the books of Acts chapter 238 that our God would will be with us and he will be our shelter he will be our strength he will be our buckler he will be everything that I need him to be in that moment I don't have to pick up a gun all I have to do is pick up a scripture because whatever I speak out of my mouth shall be done do you believe that tonight he's given us his protection system the third thing is that God will give you his peace system it never seems to amaze me how God gives us love and he gives us peace he gave us his only begotten son. That's greater peace than no man knows. As a natural father, I always want to do what's most important for my sons and my daughters. I will go to the every extent. I will walk through hell as my mom and my dad used to say with gasoline clothes on just for my kids. How much more you think that your father in heaven loves you and he's willing to give to you he's willing to give you life and it more abundant he's willing to give you spiritual gifts he's willing to give you everything that you desire once you follow behind him peace i leave unto you jesus said my peace i give unto you not as the world give it but i give unto you let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid the lord will give you his strength and his peace in the midst of every adversity psalms 29 verse 11 says the lord will give you strength unto his people the lord will bless his people with peace Philippians 4, 7 says, And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. Isaiah 26, verse 3 says, You will guard him and keep him in perfect and constant peace whose mind is stayed upon you. Because he commits himself to you, he leans on you, and he hopes confidently in you. God is able to give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. I found no other peace but in Jesus Christ. I've searched all over. I've seen many different things in life. I had this, uh, the comfort of having people protect me throughout life. I had the comfort of sometimes having material possessions. But there's no peace like God's peace. When you can lay down at night and not worry about a cop coming in and taking you to jail, that's peace that only Jesus can give you. If you can go down the street and not worry about watching over your shoulders because something you did in your past, that's the only a peace that Jesus Christ can give you. When you can lay down and know if I die tonight, when I was in the world, I always thought, if I die right now, I know I'm going to a godless, a godless hell. But I can lay down literally at night and think, God, I'm okay with you. I'm okay knowing that if I take my last breath tonight, I'll be in the presence of the Lord. That's a peace that only Jesus can give you. Fourth, God's uh, GPS is God's promotional system. Have you ever been promoted in life? From one grade to the next in school. From one level of accomplishments to the next, maybe in Boy Scout or Girl Scouts. From one rank to a higher rank in the, in the military. From one place of employment to another place of employment. If you think the promotion was a result of your skills or your own, hard work or your own ability the truth is you are deceived promotion only comes from the lord psalm 75 verse 6 says for promotion and power comes from nowhere on earth but only from god he promotes one and despises and disposes another your promotions come from the lord he gives you the power and favor for advancement in every single area of your human endeavor we got to realize tonight that god's his gps for you is that he will give you promotion not only promotion on your job, 
but promotion in the kingdom because it doesn't matter how many promotion you get on this side of the earth. Only promotion that really matters is being promoted in the kingdom of God. I don't care if I never see my name on a billboard. It doesn't matter. I don't care if I ever make it to a millionaire status. What is important to me tonight is that I hear the Lord say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. That is the greatest promotion that we as Christians can ever get when God say these last and final words to you. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You may enter in. That is the greatest promotion. God has promotion after promotion in store for those. He has anointing after anointing. Greater anointing that is set aside for those who will follow behind him. The fifth thing that God has in store for you is God's possibility system. Let's immediately establish one fact. With and through God, all things are possible. Matthew 19, 26 says, But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Mark 9, 23 says, in the, uh, God's words translation, Jesus said unto him, As far as possibilities go, everything is possible for the person who believes. Your GPS puts you on the right place at the right time, and you'll never get lost. As long as you follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit and the road map, which is the Bible, you can't go wrong. This is what the word says, for your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. That means he shows you where you stand in life. You may be in the worst situation right now and the word will shine light on that. And he says he will shine light to show you where you should go. You are a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. You show me where I messed up at and you show me the right way I should go. Some of you are on the wrong track tonight. You are going through, your, going through life doing things your own way. Going through life making sure that you do things only the way that you know how to do things. But God is telling you tonight you have to turn to him. Return back unto me your first love God should be our first love when we wake up in the morning what is the first thing that we do most of us we get on our knees we get close to our charger and we check our notification we check our phone when we should get on our knees and, and say to the creator of the universe I thank you Lord for waking me up this morning breathing your breath of life into me and establishing my ways but instead we get on our wicked device called our phone. God help us tonight to get back on track. What was the first thing that you ever realized that Jesus did in your life? Do you remember the time where you would have given your everything just to be in service? And now we have people who don't even want to come to service. We got people now who would rather clap their hands as if kids in school when they say, hey, church is council tonight because there was a snowstorm. We have people who are literally happy about not coming into the service of the Lord. But the psalmist said, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. If I have to just wash the toilets in the house of God, I'd rather be in the house of the Lord. If I have to anoint every pew and just be content with doing that, I would be rather, rather be in the house of the Lord than to be in a crack house. I would rather be in the house of the Lord than to be in a jail house. I would rather be in the house of the Lord than to be in any type of miserable house out in the world. This is the best place in the world to be in. In spite of what people say, in spite of what people do, the the house of God is the best place in the world to be in. If you believe that, shout amen. The house of the Lord is the best place to be there. Why? Because there's a protection like no other in the house of the Lord. Why? Because there's an anointing like no other in the house of the Lord. You may feel something when you watch it on Facebook or when you watch it on TV, but there's nothing like being in the presence of God when he do a miracle right in your face. Some people will miss out on God's miracles because they are stuck at home. Get into the house of God where he has, uh, uh, he has things in store for you. He has great possibilities in store for you. The sixth thing that God has in store for you is God's power system. I'm about to speak a five-word sentence to you, the reality of which can change your life forever. Here it is. God hasn't lost. God hasn't lost power, 
or he hasn't left you powerless. Acts 1 8 says, You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you, then you shall become witnesses for me. The power Jesus promised after the Holy Ghost comes upon you is an enabling power. The Greek word for power is dunamis, which means ability. The greatest power, God's last and powerful thing, his GPS system for you is God's power system. The part of being filled with the Holy Ghost is not just about speaking in tongues. Even though we do that, and Paul said, I speak with tongues more than anything, than any of you. But the greatest part of being filled with the Holy Ghost is to be a witness for Jesus Christ. To be a powerful witness, to be able to go out and see people come in. What would happen tonight if one person brings another person back next week because of the power of their witness? What happens if the 20 or maybe 30 people that's in here tonight bring back only one person next week? We have 60. What if we bring back two people next week? We have 120. What if we continue to bring back more and more people through only the power of our witness? The greatest witness you ever have is this, to, have, to live an obedient life in front of Christ. You are the only Bible someone would ever read. Why don't you give them the show? They're going to talk about you anyway. They're going to say that you don't have any style. They're going to say that you are a crazy radical, but why don't you give them something to talk about? Ain't that right, Brother Dunn? Why don't you ride around in the Jesus machine and let people know that Jesus Christ is the King of kings and the Lord of lords? Why don't you go around and tell people that he is a God who is still in the healing business? He is a God who is still in the delivering business? Why don't you give them a show? Why don't you, as your marriage, which is, which is a replica of the marriage between Christ and the church, why don't you let the neighbors see how good our God is by the way you love and treat one another. Tonight, what if we all determine that we're going to be powerful witnesses for Christ? We're going to allow God to use us in such a way that it's going to bring glory to his name and people will run into these sanctuaries and say, what must I do to be saved? With every eye closed, no one looking around tonight, there may be someone tonight who's off track. You've been following your own intuition, your own voice, or even the voices of deceiving demons. The good news tonight is that our God knows exactly where you're at. He knows how long you've been in this situation. He knows your address. He even knows your number. But our God is not one who comes in and try to take over. He's a gentleman. He'll let you lay in your mess until you get tired of laying in it. He'll let you, as a prodigal son, eat all the mess out of the pen, pen pit until you get to the point where you come to yourself. I pray tonight that if that's you, that you would hear a voice that's louder than any other voice in the universe. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger, they will not follow. It's time to quit following strange, deceiving voices. It's time to quit following your own thoughts. It has to be something that is absolute truth, that puts all opinions to shame. That absolute truth is, the Word of God. He's given us the truth. He's given us the Word that will get us back on track. If that's to you tonight, come to Christ. Lay down your burdens for His burdens. Lay down your hardships, your troubles, the weight of sin, or whatever weight that easily beset you, lay it down tonight. Let's pray. Father, I pray right now, God, for every person on the sound of my voice. 
through the foolishness of preaching, God, I pray tonight, Lord, that you would convey a message to your people, Lord, to get back in position, to listen to your voice. We've been listening to our own voices for far too long. We've even been listening to the voice of Satan that tries to say, thus says the Lord. But as Jesus said, for it's also written, man shall serve the Lord thy God, and only him shall I serve. I pray tonight, God, that you have given us a spirit of discernment to know your voice versus the voice of Satan trying to emulate an angel of light. I pray tonight, God, that all type of gods are being destroyed as I speak. That the gods of Islam, the gods of self, the gods of money are destroyed in our lives tonight, God. Father, you are the only way, the truth, and the light. No man can come to the Father without Jesus. Tonight, Jesus, we receive you. We receive your goodness. We receive your grace. And we receive your mercy. If there's someone tonight who doesn't know Christ, I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call you out. But if you don't know Christ, would you pray this prayer as we pray tonight? Lord Jesus, I pray tonight that you will forgive me for living my life the way I want to live my life. For living in rebellion to your word and your Holy Spirit. Tonight, God, I return back unto you. I turn from my own wandering ways and I choose to follow Jesus Christ. I a, admit that I am a sinner and I can't save myself. I b, believe that Jesus Christ is the only way unto heaven. And I tonight see, confess with my mouth that you are my Lord and my Savior. I thank you tonight for answering this question for all eternity. I love you and I praise your name. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer tonight, there's a celebration that's going on in the heaven. And if there's a celebration that's going on in heaven, how about we give the Lord a good hand clap of praise? I believe that if the seed didn't get fulfilled tonight, I believe the seed was planted and that salvation is coming to someone's life. Let's give the Lord another good hand clap of praise. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and for your grace. Hallelujah. Let's get on God's GPS system. Let's get back in position so that we may be used of the Lord. Amen. God bless you and may God keep you.